Hello, woodworking enthusiasts and fellow business owners. Welcome back to our channel. We're Jenny and Davis. We're documenting our journey of building and growing a furniture business here in Houston. And today we have got something super exciting on the table. Today we're talking about the newest cool tool that we have found and that is artificial intelligence. We're gonna talk all about it and specifically ChatGPT and how you can use it in your business to make more money. If you make and sell things, this is literally a groundbreaking new tool that has already saved us hours and has made making money so much faster and so much easier for us. We've seen a couple videos like this in other corners of YouTube, but this is our version. So we're just gonna jump right in and show you how this tool can completely transform your maker business. Robots are coming, whether you like it or not, and we can either learn how to use them or we can completely miss out on how they can make us more money in our business. AI is here. The genie is out of the bottle and there's no putting it back in. We just need to learn how to use it now. But before we get started, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the subscribe button right down there and hit the bell so you don't miss any of our videos. So what is ChatGPT? Well, if you have been living under a pile of sawdust for the last few months, ChatGPT is an advanced AI language model developed by OpenAI. In layman's terms, it's a really, really, really smart virtual assistant. Way better than Siri, way better than your phone, way better than the GPS in your car. Like, this is actually useful. It can write like a human and it talks to you like a human. It can give you creative ideas. It can mash information together. It's a lot easier to show you than it is to explain it. So let's just let's just show you what it can do. Yes. All right, first up, this is ChatGPT. This is what it looks like. It's basically a little chat window. So I'm just gonna ask it a question. How do I start a woodworking business? It's a great question. Well, our channel's done. <laughs> and See just like that, 12 steps for how to start your own woodworking business. So the first and the primary use of what we're using it for is a business consultant. Without having to pay hefty fees, without getting lost in a Google search, how many times have you tried to Google something and you just wish you had a straightforward answer? ChatGPT can sort of give you that. Let's see, like, what does it actually say? Let's see, what does it say? So what's it say? Step one, define your niche, 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 niche. Determine the type of products or services you want to offer. Uh, step two, develop a business plan. Outline your goals. Figure out who you're going to sell to. Step three, acquire your necessary skills and knowledge. Most of us start with that. So ChatGPT is really cool because it like it knows you're human and so it like tries to boost you and give you a little bit of encouragement. So it just gives you 12 really difficult things to do. And then it's like, remember, starting a woodworking business requires patience, dedication, and continuous effort. It's it's it knows it just dropped a bunch of stuff on you to do and it's trying to pat you on the back and encourage you along your way. It's just a nice thing. I don't know, it just, anytime Thanks, I- Thanks, GPT. Anytime I've asked it a very difficult question and it's given me a very difficult like task list and response, it always has a little encouraging like, you can do it, think at the end. It's just kind of funny. I want to put a little like, ding, before it gets to its last sentence. So right there, first question. That is what ChatGPT can do. Um, and, and the better question you ask, the better answer you get. Is that what you're gonna say? Yeah, so we typed in a really broad question. So one, appreciate that it answered it in like 4.5 seconds, which is insanely impressive. But the more specific you get, the more specific answers you get. So if you put in there, let's say you build, you know, specifically chairs, maybe that's what your business is. If you say how to start a business building handmade wooden, wooden chairs, it's going to give you an answer that you're probably looking for more than like an answer like this. Right. So let's ask it a few more common business questions and see what it comes up with. When should I set up an LLC for my Woodworking business. This is a very common question we get. Okay. So uh, deciding when to set up an LLC depends on a few factors. I can give you some guidance, but consult a lawyer. It's the same thing we say. <laughs> right. Uh, we'll tell you what we think, but. So here's what to think about. Legal protection. One of the main reasons you get an LLC is in case somebody wants to sue you because they, 
I don't know, they threw a party, somebody was dancing on top of your table, and they fell and cracked their skull open, and they want to sue you for not building the table strong enough. Um, an LLC gives you protection. They can only ever sue the business. They can't sue you personally. So that's what they're talking about. That's the main reason you would want an LLC, mm -hmm. or most people want an LLC. The second is business complexity. So moving money around and yeah. holding patents and things like that, like an LLC just makes that a much easier task sometimes. Taxes, there's big tax breaks depending on how you pay for things. Um, that's, that's the main reason everybody should want to start an LLC. Um, permits and licenses, uh, sometimes you're required to depending on- Yeah, they like, won't give you the permit or the license unless you can prove that you're an LLC. Uh, you can't open a bank account with most of the major banks unless you show that it's an actual formal entity. Do your own homework. But this gives you things to think about, which is exactly what you asked it for. Uh, and then business growth and partnerships. If you ever want to sell your business one day, if you want to buy another business one day. Partner with somebody else to go in on your business together. Business uh, official LLCs can really help you mm -hmm. uh, make that process smooth. ChatGPT, one of the things that it does really well, and this is because they made it this way, is that it, it tells you sort of where its limits are sometimes. Yes. It's like, hey, don't depend on me too much. This thing is not omniscient. It's not God. It doesn't know everything. It's it's gonna be wrong. We've seen it do some bad things before, which hopefully we can show you here later in the video, but it's not perfect, but it's an amazing tool to get you started. Because if you were to just do a Google search on this, you would have to click probably four or five different links to get all of the information that it just gave you and it's one response that took three seconds. So, so, this is fun. This is exciting. Can we ask him more questions? Yes. Let's go. How do I increase sales in my woodworking business? An answer we all want. Oh my gosh. Oh, right. All right, so we got 11 projects that are all going to take you <laughs> six, six weeks to master, or at least wrap your head around. But at least you know the direction you're going. So identify your target market, build a strong brand, showcase your work, uh, expand your product offerings, uh, engage your online presence, yes. word of mouth marketing, uh, collaborate with other businesses, attend trade shows and craft fairs, offer personalized experiences, engage with the community, and uh, continuously improve your skills. Like all things that we already know, but it's just cool that like it can scrape the top layer of the internet and give you all the information uh, that the experts are teaching on the internet. Yes, so this is really cool. This has been some nice broad, how do I start a woodworking business information, but let's get a little deeper. Let's ask it something more specific. Let's ask it, what should I name my woodworking business? Let's see if it'll even name our business for us. I'm just curious to see if it even, like yeah. is it gonna spit out a good name or is it gonna be like, Paul's wood shop. I don't know. How creative is it going to get? Uh, where are we opening our furniture company? Um, let's do Tennessee. What, where in Tennessee? Memphis. We're going to open our... How do you spell Memphis? Memphis. Memphis? Mem I always M -E -M. thought it was Memphis. Like only men go here. You're from the South and you thought it was Memphis? We don't learn how to spell in school, okay? Oh my gosh. Memphis. Memphis, got it. Tennessee. Sorry, Memphis friends. I want to open a furniture company in Memphis, Tennessee and sell... Uh, Epoxy river tables. <laughs> Why not? Uh, here we go. Ooh, okay. Bluff City. I didn't know that Memphis was called Bluff City. Uh, this now, is these are actually really good river wood designs, like epoxy river tables. I like that. River wood designs, Memphis epoxy tables, Bluff City river furniture. So it's getting specific about certain aspects of this. ChatGPT is doing one of the things that we teach in one of our super expensive like business courses. Like if you live in an area, just grab a local landmark and make that part of your name. Delta River Designs. That rolls off the tongue very nicely. So ChatGPT is stealing our content from us. Dude, and if this is what it can do to teach you how to start a woodworking business, just imagine what good information it's going to give you when you give it the specifics of your business, the specifics of your marketing plan. Let's let's see, what are we gonna do next? Ooh, this is a good one. What wood products sell best on Etsy? Gives 
you a ton of ideas on what to sell on Etsy. Uh, how do I make my Etsy listing stand out? Photos, number one thing. We all knew that. Yes. Oh my gosh, we've been saying that for years. Keywords and tags, clear pricing and shipping, customer reviews. Does it say lighting? Is that under good photos? Customization options. Yes. Customer service. Promote your listing. It even tells you to promote it. Well, mm -hmm. it's not just enough to post it. It can get really, really specific. And again, this is not a substitute for uh, an actual human professional giving you advice. It's just a way to get started. It scrapes the top layer of the internet for an answer and tries to synthesize it in a way that it's easy for you to understand when you're reading. But it's amazing if you're asking a question that a bunch of other people mm -hmm. have asked before and starting a woodworking business is a pretty popular thing to do right now. So there's plenty of content online about how to best go about that. But quick plug for the stud stack. Uh, it's our private discord server full of maker business owners. So you can get opinions from us and other real business owners like us on what you should do or you can uh, bounce ideas that ChatGPT gives you and see if they hold any water in experience. Yes. Anyway, link down below. But yeah, ChatGPT is an amazing business consultant. And you have to pay them a surprisingly low paycheck. Most of the time it's zero dollars unless you upgrade to the fancier versions of ChatGPT. But you basically get your own consultant for free. Yeah, they have a free version. They have a paid version that's like 20 bucks a month right now or whatever. Well worth the money. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next thing it can do is optimize your operations within your business. And what do we mean by that? It can help you generate plans, schedules, and even come up with new designs. So let's take a closer look. Let's start figuring out how it can actually help us optimize operations in our woodworking business. reading a recipe like this is how they teach you to make brownies on the internet not build a picnic table this is so cool that's it that's all it takes so first off it's gonna say all right cool we're building a picnic table materials you'll need first you get a materials list it gives you numbers it gives you dimensions um, and then step-by-step -step instructions prepare assemble construct install now, I wow. would never use this if I was unfamiliar with power tools. Let me just say that up front. Like, if you know what you're doing, you can understand where ChatGPT maybe grabbed a step from the wrong blog article online and put it in here. But the fact that it was able to give you this much detail just right off the hop is incredible. Um, so this is a great place to start. And maybe if you're uncomfortable using a circular saw or a miter saw from here, you might go watch a YouTube video or find an article on how to use a miter saw. So that's how it can like help generate plans and figure and like literally tell you how to build something. Um, let's try something a little bit more specific. So I'm gonna ask it, where can I find walnut lumber in Houston, Texas? <laughs> Boom. It tells you exactly where to go. This this is one of the like common questions we get in the yes. DMs sometimes is like, where do you get your lumber from? Um, and right here, it, it scrapes the internet. It gives me three really great reputable sources in, in Houston for lumber. And- um, But I do also res like, I like how it respects the potential that you're very much so a beginner. So let's say you don't even know what type of store to go to to get lumber. It says, one, you can go to your local lumber, lumber yards and suppliers. Visit local lumber yards, sawmills, and woodworking suppliers. So if you are so new to the craft that you're like, I, I don't even, what, a hardwood dealer? What in the world does that mean? It, it gives you the broad answer and then it dives down into the specifics. The number one thing when you're learning something new is to learn the vocabulary so mm -hmm. that you can have an intelligent conversation about what gaps in your knowledge exist. And so ChatGPT is really good about sort of spoon feeding you the context or giving you the language with which to talk about something that you're trying to learn. Um, and that's another really cool, powerful part of the tool. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's get even more specific. Oh, yes. 
I want to hear ChatGPT's opinion on pocket holes. Okay, so on the pocket hole question. <laughs> Pocket holes are a popular form of joinery in woodworking. I asked if it was a good form of joinery, not if it was popular. <laughs> it stayed not. so neutral. I wonder if this knows that this is like a polarizing question on the internet it's or not. It's looking at the pit of comments <laughs> under pocket hole videos and it's trying to just say, uh, people it, don't it, know. It looked at it and I was like, no thanks, not for me. <laughs> same chat GPT, same. <laughs> So it just gives you the advantages and disadvantages that everybody's screaming about in all caps in the comment section. So uh, ease of assembly, strength and stability, discrete appearance, versatility, all the reasons that people like pocket mm -hmm. holes because they're just quick and easy. And then all of your woodworking Luddites out there are talking about uh, aesthetics and craftsmanship, um, skill development. So these are the considerations of why people don't like pocket holes. Mm -hmm. um, it does bring up some structural considerations. So pocket hole joinery doesn't allow for the same degree of wood movement, which there's that. And then it talks about load bearing joints. You probably don't want to use pocket mm -hmm. holes on, on something that's like actually load bearing. All right. So still no closure on the pocket holes. Are they good? Or are they bad argument? But at least you have a whole lot more information to develop your own opinion on from ChatGPT. In 10 seconds, ChatGPT gave you a full snapshot of the entire picture of the pocket hole joinery debate without getting sucked into a pit of comments and trying to figure out what's good and what's bad. That's worth $20 a month to me right there. So another tool that I've been looking for that uh, I didn't quite know was uh, like an industrial clamp rack. So like a tabletop clamp rack. Um, I think John Malecki has one of these. Uh, a lot of guys have these, but they're, they're like floor standing uh, clamps where you can have multiple tabletops uh, mm -hmm. in the same piece of square footage in your shop. They also make a huge version of uh, that I saw on a friend's Instagram that's like a carousel. It's like a library of tabletops. And again, I didn't know what it was called. Um, I couldn't get a, a straightforward answer on what it, what it was with a Google search. And so uh, let's see if ChatGPT can arrive at this, uh, I think it's called a clamp carry, like a tabletop carrier rack. I don't even remember what it is. ChatGPT can get us the answer. How can I glue up 20 tabletops in? at once in my shop. So it's telling me how to make them. So not necessarily what we were looking for. So maybe we could say something like, what is a tool that would help me accomplish that process? I love it. So it it's so this is this is where ChatGPT is wrong, and a human needs to come in and iron it mm -hmm. out for now. Um, there isn't a single large tool specifically designed to hold twenty table glue ups at once. That's not true. I know what it is. Okay, so we've shown a bunch of examples on how you can optimize your operations and your business using ChatGPT. But now let's move on to the topic that I think most people are most excited to use ChatGPT for? I know we definitely are. This was a game changer for us. When we found out ChatGPT could do this. game changer. It was incredible. So ChatGPT can help you with content creation. Obviously, we love that. Uh, but it, content creation is a really big deal if you're trying to start a business. The world is going digital. It just is. And if you're not, if you don't have a presence in the digital world, it's going to be very hard for you to, to attract and bring in customers long term. But what's difficult about content creation is if you want to grow, you have to post more and post consistently. But posting more takes time, a lot of time, which is why most people don't do it. So let's show you how ChatGPT can help you grow on social media by being able to post more often. Boom, 10 ideas for TikToks right there. 
and it tells you how to make a better TikTok at the end too, like using t music, but it gives you 10 ideas of what TikToks to make to sell a cutting board to somebody. So you can either take one of these ideas and run with it on your own and come up with exactly what shots you're gonna make and what graphics you're gonna include, or you can go a little bit deeper, pick one of the, these ideas and ask it to script it for you. So TikTok quick cuts, so like. That's why there's not many words in each scene. But there, now you don't even have to think about what you want to say. Yep, and it remembers. So I asked it like, hey, can you script out idea number six? I can, you can go back a couple of messages ago and say like, hey, tease that out a little more. Give me more detail. Yep. Um, but right there, isn't that crazy? Let's have it write an Instagram caption for us. including emojis. It even tells you what emojis to put in there. Another thing you can do is you can ask it to write marketing emails for you. So we've used this. Uh, please write a marketing email optimized for conversions to our past customers who might want to a dining table from us. Boom, right there. Just plug in your information in the brackets and uh, you're off to the races. Yep. You can use this to create blog posts, newsletters, I mean, like we've said, social media posts, anything where you feel like you don't quite have time to do the writing on, this'll do it for you. Me, looking back in the past, I used to write blog posts all the time. Every single week, I would have one to two blog posts and ready to go. And it'd take you a few hours for each one. And it took a long time. I wish I would have had this tool to at least get me started or create me an outline. It's insane. I love this. So great customer service is the key to any successful business. And ChatGPT can do a lot to help you with that. Uh, the main way that we have used it uh, is to say things nicely. Um, our beloved customers sometimes ask for things that we don't do, or they ask for things without understanding how hard it's gonna be for us to pull that off. And so um, in the negotiation phase of coming to terms on a deal, uh, ChatGPT has been very helpful because uh, I'm bad at words, Jenny's bad at words, uh, and ChatGPT makes us good at words. So uh, let's give it a little uh, theoretical customer scenario and see what it can do to help me not sound uh, like such a jerk. A, a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know down in the comments if you've ever run into a scenario like this with a customer, how you handled it and how you think ChatGPT would have done it better. <laughs> we have a customer who is, uh, who wants a refund for her non-refundable deposit before we were about to deliver it. Oof. That's why you always get a down payment, people. It took us six weeks to build and we can't use the material for anything else. How do <laughs> I tell her nicely that I can't give her a refund? <laughs> Let's see what it says. So ChatGPT wants me to email her. Oh, okay. Makes sense. That's probably how you're communicating I mean, with yeah. her. But it just assumes. All right, so let's start at the top. What's the subject? Regarding Re your customer order cancellation and deposit. Okay, so it's setting expectations. It's like, hey, you canceled your order. That's yeah. good. Dear customer name, we hope this email finds you well. We wanted to address your recent request for a refund of your non-refusable deposit for the custom order you placed with us. We understand that circumstances can change and we genuinely regret any inconvenience caused by the cancellation of your order. As a small business, we invest significant time, effort, and resources into fulfilling each custom order. In the case of your order, we dedicated a considerable amount of time and expense spanning over six weeks to meticulously craft your bespoke piece. A little wordy, but I like it so far. Yeah. 
Throughout the process, we carefully sourced the materials required, ensuring the highest quality. It's important to note that when a customer orders placed, we allocate specific resources. So it's talking about all the work that you've done already yeah. before you finally drop the bomb of like, yo, uh, we are unable to provide a refund in this particular situation. Right. Yeah, due to the customized nature of our products and the non-refundable deposit policy. policy. So this is the magic line, and this is what took us a couple of years to like finally write in our terms and conditions. Yep. Unfortunately, due to the customized nature of our products and the non-refundable deposit policy, we're unable to provide a refund in this particular situation. But it gives you like two and a half paragraphs of like consoling before it drops the bomb that says right. we're not giving you a refund, and you know which is great customer service. It is, it is. And you know what's great too is you're typically, you're very emotionally loaded at this point, right? Because you as the maker and the business owner are frustrated that somebody didn't understand your process, they want a refund, maybe you're feeling a little offended that they didn't like the piece that you created or they no longer want it. So, But the last thing you want to be doing is writing an email like this when you're that emotional. So being able to like offload it onto an unbiased third party, oh my gosh, that's amazing because listen this is so not emotionally fueled at all it's just very polite originally i would have written this email and said like <laughs> hey you know the policy you've clicked agree to the terms and conditions like no refunds but that's going to make me sound like a jerk and i know that and so i want to use chat gpt to help me not drive my business into the ground again <laughs> i did that with a website business Ooh, that's, I like that last paragraph. We understand this may not be the resolution you're hoping for, but we assure you that we've taken your situ situation into careful consideration while considering the circumstances from our end. And in our experience, most upset customers, they just want to be heard. Mm -hmm. They don't like... So and understood. Some of them just are, are out for blood. Some of them just want their money back. But most of them just want to feel seen and heard. And if you tell them like, hey, I get it. We thought about that. We struggled with this decision, but ultimately, like, I'm really sorry. We just can't offer you a refund in this position. Most people are like, yeah, that's, I'm upset, but I get it. Like, most people are going to be fine. This is a great example of how you can use ChatGPT for customer support. You give it your complicated situation, ask how you want to get out of it, and it smooths it over for you. You could easily use this to email back a customer who had a question. You can also use some of this to put on your terms and condition page. Oh, like, yes. just copy and paste that into your, you know, if this is a, an, an issue that you commonly have, you can use these lines of like answering the questions politely and just Put it right on your terms and condition page. Then the next time that you deal with this problem, you just go to your terms and conditions page, copy the paragraph and send them that email. You don't have to ask ChatGPT every single time. You can start to have a frequently asked questions section or a terms and conditions page, and you can just use that as your source material. But ChatGPT can help you write that. The option, honestly, like the things it can do for you are just endless. It is absolutely insane. It is a game changer and it has saved us so much time. You know how you get decision fatigue if there's like too many things you have to decide on and it stresses you out? So if you can have ChatGPT just take away two or three for you because it accomplishes it in five minutes, all of a sudden you've got more brain power to use on bigger problems in your business like what new products should I bring to market? I can't understate the power of this tool. As it gets better, it's just gonna be amazing. Like it's gonna start video editing soon. It's mm -hmm. gonna start like, there's probably already things that people have built businesses around of tasks that it can complete. Um, it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna massively disrupt the economy. Uh, it's gonna suck for a lot of people in a lot of different ways. But those of us that learn it, accept it, and try to use it as fast as possible are going to be better off than uh, those that try to resist it. So. Anyway, I don't mean to be all doom and gloom. This is an amazing tool. It can help you make so much more money. Uh, but the, the point is to, to use it. You, you Play with it. Take a day. Get lost. Just go crazy with it. But then make sure that you're implementing it to, and to actually make a difference for your business. Don't just get lost playing with the new toy. Go out there, make money, use it to your advantage. Technology is just a tool. Your skills, passion, and creativity are the real driving force behind your business. So, are you ready to embrace AI in your woodworking journey? Or are you gonna miss out on the biggest technological revolution since the internet began? Share your thoughts with us down in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss any more from us. We would love it if you would share this video with your fellow business friends uh, so that we can all get out and ahead of this and uh, make it work to our advantage. So, uh, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.